Referee Roy Francis will soon have to retire. He is still so fit that he was up at 5.30 this morning to play 18 holes of golf. Tonight he referees a British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight title fight. David Starry, will we see the Suffolk punch from him again tonight? Starry, the one with the yellow stars down the black trunks, the white stripes of challenger Mark Baker, who fights out of Lewisham but has been doing his preparation in Chris Eubank country down in Hove with Eubank's old trainer Ronnie Davis. Look for Baker to be applying the pressure and looking for body shots. But Starry has an impressive repertoire of punches, just occasionally his defence can look a little leaky. And there is still the memory of the way he fell apart rather mysteriously against Dean Francis. He's caught by a right hand from Baker there. Yes, I still think that's uh, the problem with Starry. He is very open defensively. He's got a languid sort of style, arms outstretched, but there's big gaps in his defence, and that's what Baker will be looking to capitalise on. These two, by the way, are old mates and sparring partners, dating back to the early days of Starry's professional career. Neither of them prepared to say who got the better of those exchanges. But these are the exchanges that matter. Baker, remember, with the white stripes down the trunks, rather unhelpfully for you, they're both wearing black. We can't do much about that, I'm afraid. Just a bit tentative early on here, Starry, as if he's doing a reconnaissance mission. And he's good again. A good solid looking right hand from Baker. The Baker's having a few successes and already that we were seeing that he has got a leaky defense story and this is like a good opening round for Baker. Being caught by rather too many shots, David Starry, and that impression of a slightly open defense being reinforced early on here. I think this is his biggest test since that Dean Francis fight. Yes, I think this fight will tell us an awful lot about David Story and where he'll go from here, if he belongs in world class or not. Baker, just a no-nonsense kind of operator, unfazed by most things. Again, he gets through with the left hand, though. And the other thing about Baker is, to use his phrase, he's got a chin like a concrete post. Starry hasn't managed to get through with anything decent. There's been some good punches landed from Baker. And I think that was Mark Baker's opening round, undisputably. Well, it's going to be a massive disappointment for this big local crowd if David Starry is beaten by Mark Baker tonight. But Baker did get him with some good shots in that opening session, Glenn. He did. Just look where the hands are of Starry. He's trying to get through his own shots, and Baker comes round with a, a looping right hand, and it lands flush. And Starry's going to take heed from that, start getting tucked up a little bit more. Second round for the British and Commonwealth Super Middleweight crowns, held by David Starry. Talk of the winner here, fighting European champion Bruno Girard. Starry was lined up to fight Joe Calzaghi for a world title fight a few months ago. He was gutted, he says, when that fell through, the financial deal couldn't be made. Baker keeping himself pretty well covered up. And just looking to pick holes from time to time. Starry's defence. Big is not the, the most stylish.
rush of fighters, but he's he's effective. And he's just turning away from punches and letting the, the old hook go. So he just finds it difficult to get through to the target as yet. Jab working. Look for the pick punches from long range. And he worked with the jab here from Starry. Does a good variety when he's in his best form. Let's start a bit slowly here though. Just beginning to turn on some more dazzling skills here now. Better movement from him. He's Looks as if he's loosened up a little. There's a bit of variety now from Story. Still a little bit tentative when he throws out some of his punches. He needs to get a bit more confidence and conviction when he lets those shots go. Maybe just the effect of the gum shield, but he almost seems to be fighting with a smile on his face, doesn't he, Story? Just a lot of time he does seem to have that effect. But I think there's a, a lot of concentration there. Welcome back to the Corn Exchange, Ipswich, packed to the rafters tonight, and many, many fans for David Starry, the local boy. Did better in that second round, didn't he? Yes, he did, just started to loosen up, look for punches at long range, got his jab into gear a little bit, and Vega found it difficult to get close and get any effective work going. Here's the third round, due to go 12, of course. Held by Starry, who's in his second reign as British champion and making his third defense of the Commonwealth title. Starry with the yellow stars down the front, Baker with the thin white stripes. Baker, who recently left the Peacock gym, he said no reflection on anybody there. He thought he just was getting a bit stale down there. That's why he moved to Wally Davis. He feels that move has freshened him up as a fighter. Good right hand from Baker there. Starry again just leaving himself open. Really big and needs to put a bit more pressure on Starry. He needs to close the gap and be a little rougher. He's just standing off Starry and that'll suit Starry if he can pick from long range and just use his boxing ability. And that's a bit more like the Mark Baker that we've grown accustomed to. The great hand from Starr, he's got superior speed and probably skills too. Baker is all about heart and grit and pressure. I didn't like the way Starry 
rather tamely surrendered in his only career defeat against Dean Francis to do that night, but maybe that experience has hardened him to the realities of life at the top. Well, he's come back from that very well, so hopefully for him that is the case, but he did just fall apart when, the, when he was under pressure. He really, that's what Mark Baker's got to try and do, he's got to get to him, really try and look Starry up. And at this moment, he's not really doing that, just standing off a bit, needs to get busier. Starry almost looks as if he's twin with his opponent. He's flicking out shots, he's got a lot of little classy cameos. Tommy Brooks, the famous American trainer, said he was one of the most talented fighters he'd ever seen. Just beginning to outbox Baker a little here, or maybe frustrate him a little. Baker very intent. You feel at some stage here in really trying to rough up the younger man. Switch hitting as well, Starry. This round again. More live international rugby union for you on Saturday morning. Another two big test matches. 3.30, early start for New Zealand against France. And at 10.30, Australia against England. Live international rugby union for you this weekend. Two test matches, both live only on Sky Sports. This one's warming up nicely in Ipswich. Back to Glenn A few of the Ipswich Town players is here watching David Starr. He was pretty big mates with them. A big headline in the evening star tonight from Frank Maloney. The promoter of David Starry saying, don't blow it like the blues. I bet the Ipswich fans love that. Starry, they're beginning to just turn it on a bit. Well, he won't do that was opening round. Sorry, Glenn. That was his right hand from Baker, just showing that he can still get through those leak defences. Baker needs to do a little more to apply more pressure. Just talking for a moment there to Starry. Respectful almost. Yes, he has. He's also been turning away down to his right and just not standing up straight, big. And I think that's allowed Stoy to get through his right hand. But he looks more intent and more aggressive at the beginning of this round, Baker. Baker needs to turn this into a brawl, a bit of a rough house. Take Starry into the trenches, as they say.
hasn't been a messy run. Neither one's had that good success. Uh, much more of a level scoring than the yeah, there with that as well. The super middleweight division in this country has been uh, very interesting for a long time. There's been a change of the WBA world champion, Byron Mitchell taking over from Frankie Lars a few days ago. The European title held by Bruno Girard. The winner of this could fight him, by the way. Starry holding the British and Commonwealth crowns at the moment. And defending them tonight. Now there's Ronnie Davis with Mark Baker. What does he say to him, Glenn? Well, I think he's just got to get the, to be very aggressive. He's getting through, as you see there, with the right hand. But he needs to, to be busier with both hands. At times he looks good. You can see he gets through. The defences are open from Starry. And, you know, he's just got to keep going, be very aggressive and take the fight to Starry. Fifth round. White stripes down the tracks of challenger Mark Baker, who's brought a few coach loads of fans to support him here tonight. But they're in the minority, believe me, around here in East Anglia. Now, this is what Baker knows he has to do. Starry will have been expecting it from him. Well, he came straight out and hit Starry with a, a big right hand, and he needs to. Shot. That's the one that's been quite successful. Still, they're getting tangled together a little too much. Yeah, it's getting a little messy. Davis, who Chris Eubank occasionally, in his more lordly moments, used to just call him Porter. Porter, get my bag. He was... <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. 
to carry his key and said he's the best peer key carrier in the country. Yeah, they had good money, they had some good times together. I think they're still reasonable friends, although they did split up, of course, and Ronnie Davis, his own man. Now, he has Howard Eastman, by the way, the British middleweight champion as well. Sixth round of this one, they need to clean it up a little bit. It's gone a bit messy. I couldn't separate them in that last round. You thought Baker just got the better of it on the inside, didn't you, Glenn? Yeah, I just thought he was catching Story. Story's not suited to this sort of work. Baker gets through, and his punches are a little better inside. That's how I've got it. I've got more standing dead level at this point. And I've got Story just in front. sort of night if it develops like this in which David Starry will find it difficult to advertise his claims to advance to European and world title level it's disappointing with someone with his boxing ability to me making you know, this messy a fight you would think he would be able to keep it clean boxing long range and just find holes in the defense of Vega He's turning it into a bit of a trial of strength, Mark Baker, with all this inside clinching and mauling, and that just might, laid on, play into his hands. Might Starry just start to get frustrated? Well, I'm sure if there was a fight plan that they laid down, this is the sort of plan that Baker would want. He'd want it close. He'd want to make it an aggressive fight, a fight of physical strength and toughness. Very mentally strong, Mark Baker. So he's haunted by fears that boxing will regard him as a nearly man. Says he has to win this time, otherwise he has no future. That's why he's trained so very long and hard for this in an underground gym at the Maytree Pub in Hove, down by the sea. Starry's Panther getting behind him. Listen to the noise ringing around. Corn exchange now. <laughs> he does have the capacity though as well, doesn't he, Glenn? I've noticed it before. Even when he's looking ordinary sometimes, Starry can sometimes just produce a really cracking punch from somewhere. I guess he can even come off with a good combination, but Baker's not allowing the room to get those punches off. And it's still very messy, difficult to score again. Maybe Story just got a little busier. Let's hear what Barry McGuigan is making of developments. Well, I think that uh, um, Story's beginning to pull ahead now. This is a crucial point in the fight. This is where uh, this is where Mark Baker has to get back into the fight. He's got to get into it right now. He's got to be more aggressive. He's got to start throwing more punches if he wants to. Hopes to overhaul this because uh, I feel as Charlie's beginning to pull out a bit of a, a lead here. He's got to put the pressure. See Ronnie Davis slapping him in the corner. He's got to step up the pressure. He's got to throw more punches. He's got to start holding Starry, stop him from moving, and he's moving very well. He's going left, going right, keeping Baker confused and throwing alternating punches. It's very clever stuff from Starry, but and it's a bit scrappy. But Baker's got to put the pressure on if he hopes to get back in the fight. Thank you, Barry. Baker with that lived-in face of his. It's affected uh, a couple of TV and film producers. He's been in London's burning on the film Real Money. And that's they set to take a good right hand from Starry there. I guess that was a good combination. Looking to get his jabs working and then a good right hand from Starry. Cozy setup in Suffolk with his 70 year old trainer Gordon Holmes. They love the tranquil atmosphere out in this part of the world, and you can't blame them for that. Some people have said it's a bit too cozy a setup. 
there. Sometimes you can benefit from uh, the tough gyms in London where there's lots of ready-made sparring just to get a tougher mental attitude. Fake is on the hunt at the moment. Starry still with that half grin on his face. Okay, just a bit too content to lean over the shoulder of Starry. I'd like to see him just try and pull back, give himself some room for other cuts. The right hand from Starry. Baker had to give ground there, and that's why the crowd got excited. Well, they're cheering every jab that Starry lands. Starry just that little bit busier in this session. There's some decent work. Scoring that touch, which has really got the crowd in the full voice now. The right hand again. Piece of hand speed from Starry. He's a good amateur, England captain, two ABA titles and wins over Glenn Catley, Dean Francis, and Jason Matthews in his amateur days. Of course, Francis has reversed that in the play ranks. Currently out injured still, but luckily Stan Francis will be at least another three months before he can even train again. Yeah. Still a, a lot of pulling and shoving, trying to get the arms. To not, not, a, not a very clean fight, but a lot of rough stuff going on there. It's not a great spectacle, but it is a trial of strength. And you'd have to say, really, that Starry looking a little less fragile than in the past. In the Francis but he is cut underneath, badly cut underneath the left eye. Bad gaps for Starry. Problems for him in the seventh. Well, it didn't ought to be too much of a problem, that. They should be able to uh, mend that. They've got Dean Powell there in the corner, helping out Gordon Holmes, but it's a nasty one. Yes, it is, Mick Williamson, straight to work on that cut. It's beneath the eye, so as you said, he shouldn't give him too much problems, but it's something that he could still do without. Well, I think that definitely the heads came together there very heavily. That's always going to be a problem in a, an aggressive fight like this, where they're constantly coming together. Good detective work. Backstage does look like a head bash caused that problem for David Starr. It's Mick Williamson doing the cut work in the front of a London cab driver. And Dean Powell is there as well with Gordon Holmes, who's been with Starry all the way. This sort of thing. Starry has looked comfortable enough doing this, though you wouldn't have thought it was his kind of fight. The blood flowing again from that cut. The stars. That's a pretty deep gash, that you know. Yes, it looks pretty bad. Starry needs to start getting that little bit of room between the two of them. This is not his sort of fight. Obviously, he could get more damage. The boxing suits him from long range, giving him handles, moving with the feet, and then fast counters. He's not doing that. Heads coming very close together again. It's a bit of a rough house, this. And pretty tough to score when it's this messy. Again, Ray Francis seems to have his hands full. Sometimes he does get the fights like this. Got a physical for him, he has to work hard. And he had that awful Southern Area title fight, didn't he, the other week? Now, contender for worst fight of all time in the British ring, or one of them anyway. Yes. Not again from that gash of Starry. It is a bit of a problem, and there's quite a long way to go. Obscuring the vision. Good stiff 
jab. Baker rather walked onto that. Well, it's not very clean, more reminiscent of a street corner wall than anything you see in the, the boxing ring. But I think this sort of thing does suit Mark Berger. He'll be pretty comfortable with this.
frustrating and disappointing. Let's have a word from uh, another of our experts tonight, Nicky Piper. Nicky, what do you think? How are you unraveling this one? Well, Ian's getting very scrappy, isn't it? The last two rounds have been... Uh, un you've been un unable to split the guys. Very few clean shots landed. The last thing I would have thought Starley would have wanted with the cutters you see them working on there is to get involved in a scrappy comp, scrappy fight and get inside. He needs to keep it long, he needs to start jabbing. He's got the ability, he's just not using his brain at the moment. It's suiting Mark Baker. Mark Baker's got to stay inside, hopefully worse than that cut, and uh, without work, Starling on the inside. He's playing into Baker's hands, although at the moment Baker's not quite doing enough to gain the points, in, in my opinion. Thanks a lot, Nicky. And while uh, Nicky was talking there, you saw Roy Francis going across to both corners, saying he expects some cleaner work with us. He looks a bit dispirited in there, doesn't he, Baker? Yes, I don't think he has got a good deal in this fight. He's, he just hasn't really gotten into a full flow more bigger. He's often turned away and he's looked to lean over the shoulder of Story. And that's really where you'd expect him to be getting his hands free and looking to work. Got him with a left hook there. Some damage around the eyes of Starry. I think Ronnie Davis sent out Baker with one of those old slaps around the face he used to give you back from time to time. The damage to the left eye now, yeah. Here's a cut over the left eye for Starry, and that looks bad. He's cut under the left eye and now over it as well. Well, Franz is taking a close look. We are in the 10th round. He's we're trying to give him every chance, of course, because he's here defending his title. But the damage looks bad, and this is proving to be a very, very hard night for David Starry. The quarterback really turning on the class in style at the moment, dazzling in front of the TV cameras. He just hasn't been allowed to do that. And now he looks as if he's been stung into trying to get Baker involved in a toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange, but Baker won't have any of that in the game, denies him the leverage. Well, again, with, with a badly cut eye, he allows himself to get drawn into a fight, and I think that you know, is, is terrible. You know, you'd think anybody now would get on the bike, move around, use their boxing skills and keep it clean. Instead, he's getting right in there where the eye damage can get much worse. You know, I'm wondering if he's thinking that he might be stopped by the cuts, and that's why he's going for it. Well, he's tried to go for it all the way through, and it's never paid off, so you think maybe try and use your boxing ability. We you think uh, that it was a clash of heads that caused that second cut over the left eye of Starry. Baker is unmarked. It's a street corner brawl, this. Starry is really trying to give himself room to let go with some hooks. Baker uses all that experience to just lean on and foil him and straight him again. And the cat gets even worse, and he looked like another clash of heads in there. Looked like a nasty one. is a mess for David Starry. Well, it's still much the same, just very, very scrappy, Morley, just punching inside, punching with one hand, tied up, everything's going on in there. A debilitating fire, I think, too, for the pair of them. This must be immensely draining for the pair of them. Both conditioned themselves superbly. Starry going with a good looking right uppercut in there, though. That was one of the cleanest shots of the whole contest, I think. There's a cut by the bridge of the nose, it looks like, as well, for Starry, too. It's quite dramatic because Starry is trying to stay alive in the contest despite this mounting damage that he's got. They're glad they've got Mick Williams in there. This is where the cutsmen really earn their money. Yes, they are, but really what the corner should have been seeing is not get involved all the way through this fight as much as he has. And I, I think what this has proven to me, we can see how the, the heads are coming together terribly there. 
And what this is telling me is really that David Story has not got the savvy for World Cup boxing. You should be thinking better than this in a fight like this. Yeah, and going on with that is really not thought of a smarter fight. Roy Francis has gone over again. He's having a little word with Starry. He might have had a little look at the cut as well. But he's only got two rounds and six minutes to survive with that story. We think he's probably ahead in the fight, don't we, Glenn? Yes, I've got him. I think it's three points ahead at this stage. Just doing a little bit more, a little bit cleaner work. But never convincing, never looked really on top, and never really shown the skills that he thought he had. If he does win it, Starry, I think it'll be one that he'll just be glad to get out of the way. But he's found it very hard to shut down. And this is what he needs to do a bit more of. Stay away. Uses height and reach advantages and his speed to dominate it from the outside a little bit. You'd think, anyway. You may take a great cross from Baker there. You wonder if he feels comp confident enough to box at long range. You know if he feels that you know, he's better closer in. And, uh, yeah, I find it very strange that he's elected to fight this sort of fight. But you wouldn't call it an impressive performance from Baker either, would you, really? No, it wouldn't. as ever, but he hasn't got away with that much that's looked very clean, has he? He hasn't. Too often he's been looking to lean over the shoulder story and cut him inside instead of being aggressive and keep the hands working. He hasn't worked. Three minutes around, which he said he was going to do. It's a fair bit of an atmosphere in here now. Starry's fans on their feet everywhere trying to cheer him home. And in what might be a fight that could be a little tightish, maybe on the scorecard, if it was, because it is open to different interpretations. That home advantage for David Starr might be worth something in this kind of situation. Good right hand, in over the top. From Starr. That's good right hand, but then falls in behind his work, doesn't allow himself to get anything behind that right hand. So there'll be no corner for a rematch. Starry trying to apply the pressure. And getting home with a couple two as he did it. Baker again content to just hold on at close quarters. He needs to work more, doesn't he, Baker? Yes, he's been too happy to hold on when they're inside. That's where the fight would suit him. But yeah, when he's in there, he's looking to, to hold and lean close. And really, that's like a big mistake for Mark Baker. I just wonder, though, if in his head, he thinks he may have got this under control. Starry definitely does, because he paints the air as that round ends. And the impression is that Starry is pulling away here and on his way to retaining his titles. Oh, and Baker come back to the corner. He come back shaking his head. Story went back touching the air, so I think the fighters themselves, you know, they can feel it who's getting the better of it. I think Story is the one that feels the more confident with his work. Story was signed by a modeling agency that used to handle Lennox Lewis at one time. Well, he might not get any assignments for a while with this damage. But again, look how messy it is. I mean, this is from somebody that we expect to have good boxing skills and wants to compete at the, the very highest world class. This field temperament and his judgment is a, a little bit short of that. This is not the finished product story. Look at him shouting it inside. Oh, he's saying it's uh, three minutes to go. Tell you what, Nick Williamson's been a bit of a hero for him in that corner, isn't he? Yes, he's Baker's going to go for it, I think. He must know he's behind. He's got to go for it. I'm sure Ronnie Davis has told him that. But it looks a bit late. It's not a mega puncher either, Baker, a useful one. But not a big, concussive knockout specialist. But if Starry does win this, he's done it really, fighting Baker's fight. Yes, he has, but why he's forfeiting his fight, well, I do not know.